بسم الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه وبركاته عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار <coughs> Firstly before we inaugurate and start in the lesson I wanted to apologize to everyone for my tardiness tonight due to the rain it was raining very severely in Washington DC we got hit by a storm so we were delayed a little bit but for now starting for the original schedule initially it's supposed to start at 7 o'clock if I'm not mistaken so Saturday definitely the lesson will start at 7 o'clock as it was a little like we said uh disturb not disturbance but there was a little mishap that took place due to the storm so inshallah I asked the brothers and the sisters to pardon, pardon me for my tardiness today and inshallah definitely inshallah by the last sat- next Saturday we'll start at 7 o'clock exactly 7 o'clock after maghrib I thought it was 7 o'clock. I could have swore it was 7 o'clock. I thought all of the lessons were 7 o'clock. What's after Maghrib? What time was after Maghrib? 7.45? Okay, we'll start 7.45 exactly. 7.45. And we will work on our punctuality, inshallah. Okay. <laughs> we start with the lesson and that which is pertaining to the most important affair, which is the foundation of our religion, in which all the foundation of the prophets was built upon, was built upon this matter which we're going to speak on. As I had asked some of the brothers inshallah to find a print of this book which is called Usul Al-Iman by Al-Imam Al-Mujaddid Al-Sheikh Muhammad Abd Wahhab rahimahullah rahmatun wazia. As the brothers I don't think was able to find this this book particularly because Allah knows best if it's been translated or not. I think maybe it might have or might not. The brother said that he made some research but he was not able to find it. But inshallah if this book is not suitable then we will probably maybe change it if we cannot find the copies or if we don't find a way we can translate the book each lesson maybe I can have a brother translate two lessons and then distribute it or disseminate it to the people or to the sisters so they can follow along in the class because that's very important because I highly emphasize to the brothers and sisters to bring their books and to bring their notebooks when they come to the class because that is very important as far as trying to receive the knowledge and also make sure that we also have what obtained it as far as memorizing it in our hearts because that's very important especially this matter which we're going to speak about like we talked about before I'm sure everyone has I'm not sure some of you have heard that the book we're going to study is Usul Al-Iman and I think that we don't have to speak about the history of the great noble illustrious scholar Muhammad Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah I think it is more famous that he has been known or he is known amongst Ahlus Sunnah wa Salafiyyin even amongst his enemies of those who hate him and those who make war of that which he brung rahimahullah rahmatun wazia so for that reason I don't think it's Allah knows best it's a really a need to touch on that which is of the history of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab because I'm sure he is known with the majority of you and Allah knows best but if those who do not know who Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahhab I ask the brothers if they can to go on the internet and find and go to those authentic websites and those trustworthy websites and to go back to it to study a little bit of his seera to study a little bit of his history and his background because it is a great story in which we still live the athar the effects of or the great effect that he had on the whole alam as far as the spreading of tauhid even myself even kashif if we don't realize it 
because we all studied in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, that which is the Jamiat al Islamiya, they live the effects of his da'wah to this day. So all of us are receiving the effects of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimahullah to this day, to this present day and time. And while we are able to be in a Salafi masjid talking about the affair of monotheism and unifying Allah and singling him out, singling him out in worship, is a great affair where we still live the effects of it to this day. And we see that his da'wah is still spreading and you still see that we are still benefiting from his books, which is a book we are what? Studying right now by him, rahimahullah. And like we talked about before, or I just said, excuse me, that we studied in the University of Medina, myself and Kashif, were allowed to be in that great country, which that was established upon the Da'aw Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah. So all of that which we are living today, myself and the knowledge that we study, the books of Kitab Tawheed, the Kashf al Shubahat, all those different tremendous books and, and treaties in which this great illustrious scholar has written, we still live the effects of it to this day and time. And also the Tulab al Ilm that have come back from the country of Saudi Arabia and the other countries, I'm not just saying that specifically, but that country and the other different countries that where the students of knowledge have studied, they still receive the effects of his da'wah rahimahullah. And we still, we still live it and we see how it manifests in our da'wah as we see it in these, day, or these present contemporary days and times. For that reason, I wanted to talk about a little bit of the book. Also explaining the great importance of Tawheed and the reason why the Ummah is in the state of their end because of this khalal or this severe discrepancy that the Ummah has fell into in regards to it. Then we will talk about the book and we'll start on it insha'Allah. Given a, a little, as they say, muqaddimah yasira, that, that which is of a simple type of introduction before we actually inaugurate in the book itself. So firstly, we want to say that the book is entitled Usul al-Iman. Usul al-Iman by the great illustrious scholar again, <laughs> Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimallah, rahmatun wazia. Now this book, as we know, the ilm al-aqidah, or the ilm al-tawheed, is the asas, is the foundation in which makes a Muslim. It's the foundation of the genetics, if you want to say, for lack of better words, the genetics and the makeup of a Muslim goes back to this. What makes a Muslim is this knowledge. That's the building blocks of a mu'min, is the asas of that which is the ilm al-aqidah with tawheed. Because without it, all of our actions would be null and void in the first place. No matter what you do. If, like we talked about in many, in many lessons, with, uh, in, in last week's, like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the lesson that no matter what you do of good, if there's some khalal in that which is in the assass of your religion, then all of it is, run, is rendered fruitless and null and void. For if a person is to set up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter if you made hajj, or if you performed hajj, or for example, you prayed your salawat for years. Or for example, you paid zakah. Or for example, if you also fasted the month of Ramadan. Or for example, you gave sadaqah. Or for example, you was good to your wife. You smiled in her face. You were doing all these actions of birr, of righteousness. But if a person set up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the aspect of worship, all of it is null and void. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَا يَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَازِرِينَ بَلِ اللَّهَ فَاعْبُدْ وَكُمْ لِشَاكِرِينَ وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says that has been revealed to you Muhammad has been revealed to those before you if you set up partners with Allah and his worship and Allah Ta'ala put emphasis on it, all the your actions is null and void. And Allah Ta'ala emphasized it in another verb where he says, وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَزِرِينَ And you will most definitely be from the losers. Rather let it alone, Allah Ta'ala who you worship, and be from those who are what? Who are thankful. For that reason, ya Ma'ashul Ikhwah, we said before, this is the assas, ilm al-aqidah. And without the ilm al-aqidah, the whole existence will be corrupt and it will be chaos and we see that manifest in front of our eyes those who live without the tawheed of Allah live in chaos those who worship other than Allah live in chaos those who live in those lands that set up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or worship idols other than Allah you see the facade of the corruption of the land for that ilm al-aqidah ilm al-tawheed 
that would lead to what is called kharab al-alam, the destruction of the world, and the destruction of this existence, because everything is built upon its foundation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even spoke about in different ayats, that if there's other deities other than him, the whole existence will be corrupt. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, he says, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَفَسَدَتَا وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ as Allah Ta'ala says in his book, if there was another deity in the heavens of the earth, if there was other deities other than Allah Ta'ala, they will all be corrupt. And another narration, or another eye, excuse me, it says, They will all try to fight with one another. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has knowledge of that which is mustahil. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has knowledge his knowledge encompasses everything, even things that which are impossible. It's impossible there will be a deity other than him. It's impossible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has told us the corruption of what will come with the result of other deities being worshipped if they existed. He said they will what? They will cause corruption. There will be chaos in the earth and there will be corruption in the earth. And if they existed, they will try to fight one another. And they will try to overtake one another. Total absolute corruption. Because one would try to override another's kingdom. And what try to override one's authority or his power. So for all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has knowledge of that which is what they call al-mustahilat. Of that which he has knowledge of, which are things which are impossible. And one might ask himself, Tayyip, as some of the Christians, even some of these, I have heard this question myself from some of the Christians. You mean to tell me that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't have a son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't have. There cannot be another deity along with him. He cannot have a son that he wants his kingdom to have. And this is the knowledge of Aqidah where it plays in. It plays its part and its role. Ya ma'ash al-ikhwa. A person was asked this question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can he have a son? Are you saying that he has, he, he has some type of deficiency in his ability? He can't have a son? You can have someone that is what? That shares in his power, his dominion? And we say the answer to that is, Ya Ma'ash al Ikhwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which is of his ability is not connected with that which is considered mustahilat, that which is connected with that which is impossible because it would necessitate some type of discrepancy and completeness in him. Tabarakah wa ta'ala. For his ability is not connected with things that would cause some type of deficiency or will render and show some type of incapability as it pertains to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if he had a child, it would necessitate, he has a need. And Allah wa ta'ala is ghani, ghina and dhatiyan. He is all self-sufficient, and that is a characteristic of his essence. It never leaves him. Allah wa ta'ala is always self-sufficient. And his ability is not connected with things which as a result of it, if he brought it to existence, it would necessitate some type of naqs, some type of deficiency or incompleteness as it pertains to him. For that reason, we say that's the answer to that question. His ability is not con connected with those type of affairs. For example, having a wife, having a child, eating, drinking, things of that nature, because they all necessitate some type of what they say, haja, a need. And his need, tabaraka wa ta'ala, shows what? That need that they so-called claim, excuse me, that would necessitate there's some type of nux. And that's the reason why his what? His ability is not connected with those affairs whatsoever. Eating, drinking, wife, children, all that necessitates a hajj. That only befits the human beings, not the one who created the heavens and the earth. You understand, everyone? So that shows the importance of ilm al aqidah to want to be well-grounded in it. So if these shayateen try to come with you with these type of notions or these type of ideologies, you will know how to defend yourself. You'll be well-equipped to know what? How to defend yourself and defend your family and your children from these type of ideologies if they were to be brought up in front of you. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in this book, Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ardi mithlahun yatanazzalu al-amru baynahun وَلِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and that shows His great ability, 
of creation. Tabaraka wa ta'ala, He is the one that has created Sabah samawat, seven heavens, and also likewise, seven earths, earth similar to it. Yatanazzalul amru baynahun. And his command descends between them. In order that you may know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encompassed everything in his knowledge. This shows the great importance of the ilm al aqidah ya ma'ash al ikhwah. Because, like we said, as a result of it will come and come the chaos and the corruption and the destruction of this existence as we live in. And we see some of that partially for those lands that do not have an ilm al or those lands that do not single Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his worship, which comes as a result of it, absolute chaos, murder, and things that comes and branches off from the most worst corruptive sin that one can commit, which is shirk with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most greatest dhulm that every human being can commit, which is polytheism with him, tabarakah wa ta'ala. For that reason, we say that the Prophet sallallahu he called to this knowledge of ilm al-tawheed. He called to the aqidah. Concentrate on this affair, as we know, for 13 years in Mecca. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa concentrated on this affair all throughout his life. But that which in the beginning was da'as, we know, for 13 years in Mecca, was a focusing on purifying the people as far as in their mind state and that which is in their hearts but that which is in, in their creed and in their conviction and their belief system. Purifying that because that is the most ultimate thing in which everyone should be focusing on purifying is their mindset, their mind, the way they think, their belief system. If that's corrupt, everything else is corrupt. That's the assess. And the Prophet ﷺ focused on those years, on, those, on, on that affair for those numerous years in order for the people to be ready for the rest of the revelation, the ahkam that was going to be revealed, so they would accept it and submit to it wholeheartedly. So as if the, the assess and the foundation was being built for the rest of the ahkam to come down of that which pertained to halal and haram, of that which is leaving off intoxicants, leaving off the zina and all of those other affairs, they submitted to it wholeheartedly because the foundation became stable and finalized until they was absolutely ready for the rest of the ahkam to be received and submitted to without having any type of reluctancy in accepting it. For that reason we say, Ya Ma'ash al-Ikhwa, you know the Prophet ﷺ even called to this affair on his deathbed, focusing on this constantly. Even on his deathbed, he was warning from setting up partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ to his bed, as he says in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, where the Prophet ﷺ had talked about, لَعْنَ اللَّهِ الْيَهُوَ نَصْرَارَ اتَّخَذُوا قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ مَسَاجِدِ يُحَذِّرُ مَا صَنَعُوا That's the Prophet ﷺ has said that, which is during his deathbed. He says, may Allah curse the Jews and the Christians. They had what? They took the graves of their prophets as masajid, as places of worship. And the Prophet ﷺ was warning from that which they did, even on his deathbed, all until he died, alayhi salatu wasalam, and also likewise from those affairs with the salat, was salat, wa ma malakata imadukum. Also when he died, alayhi salatu wasalam, he also called out about the prayer, the prayer, the prayer. To show the importance of these affairs, in which we're talking about now, which we're elaborating on. So the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, called it this affair of that which is iman, that which is pertaining to the usul and which we're going to talk about insha'Allah. One might come to what comes to his mind is that which the usul al-iman is sitta. With this book here, what comes to one's mind is what they say, usul al-iman is sitta, which is what they say, the six articles of faith, right everyone? Which is the belief in Allah, iman billah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa ruzulihi, wa liyam al-akhir, wa al-qadr, khayrihi, wa sharrih, that which is the six articles of faith, and the book is speaking about this. As we know, the word iman in itself has a knot of meanings. Iman can mean actions. It's not just the usul of that which is pertaining to the foundation, which is the belief system only, as one might think. Iman is also from it actions, a'mal. A'mal is also part of iman. And one should not say, or for example, I leave out the salat because faith is here. Or for example, I don't come to Jumu'ah, I don't need to come to Jumu'ah, I have my iman, my iman is here. And we also talked about that in the other class that was pertaining to that, which is a type of what they call irjat. And that's a type of deviance where a lot of Muslims fall into these days due to their ignorance and how shaitan plays around with some of the Muslims 
in this affair by saying, for example, I don't have to pray, I don't have to do certain affairs because it's in my heart. Rather we say to them, first of all, firstly, that iman from it is what? Actions. What's the proof of that? So many different ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, couples, iman, rather he called certain actions iman. As we talked about in, in lessons when we were in Washington, D.C., where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will null and nullify or render null and void your faith. If you look in the tafsir of the ayah, the tafsir of the ayah means the salah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called iman the salah. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ As that which happened to some of those sahaba who had died prior before. The qibla which changed and they were fear out of fear that their actions wouldn't be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed that their actions were accepted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave off their faith or render their faith on the void rather than mean what? The salah. So we would say to those people, oh, I don't have to pray. Yaqi, rather iman is for the salah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book. And that is the fruits of it, ya mashal ikhwas from the ilm. Studying and attaining knowledge will allow one to raise this ignorance off of himself. Until these ignorant statements of shaitan wouldn't come out of his mouth. Also, likewise, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many different ayats of company, coupling, faith of that which is the foundation of faith, along with actions. In so many ayat. What do we do with Surah Al-Asr? Wal Asr. In al insana la fi khusr. Illa ladina amanu ish. Allah always appears iman with what? Actions. So many ayats as this can, cannot be enumerated in the book of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in another ayah, which is, hold on, I just gotta kind of count it. That which is, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّ أَعْمَلُ وَقُلُوبِ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَ وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَبْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ ها وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَاهِدِهِمْ إِذَا عَاهَدُوا أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ إِيش صَدَقُوا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ نورس الله سبحانه وتعالى started off with that which is the actions of the heart belief in him belief in the malaika belief in the books Belief in the prophets, then it started off with what? Then it started talking about what? The actions of the limbs. And they give money for to the poor. That's actions of the limbs, isn't it? Right? First part of the ayah is talking about what? Faith. Iman. Second part of the ayah talking about what? A'mal. All of it is from Iman. All those ayats you see, Ya Ikhwa, if you study the Quran and contemplate on it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with A'mal al qulub and pairs it up with that which is from faith, which is the A'mal al jawarih Another ayah, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this book, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُ زادته إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون إيش الذين يقيمون الصلاة وإيش وأنف وينفقون مما رزقنا وهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم وغفرة ورزق كريم والله سبحانه وتعالى استرفنا آية with the actions of what pertaining to the heart أعمال القلوب verily Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the one if he's mentioned and their hearts quiver and tremble in fear What's that? What's fear? Khawf. A'mal wa? Qalb. If his ayahs are recited to them, their faith increases. And they put their trust in their heart. Tawakkul is what, everyone? A'mal. Qulub. What comes after it in the ayah? Those who establish the salah. That's the actions of what? The jawari, the limbs. Spend out of what they have. They truly are the believers. Haqqan. And they are the ones who are mutaqoon. 
They gather between a'mal of iman, of qulub. And also from iman, also likewise, is al-a'mal, a'mal al-jawarih. All of it is from iman. All of it is from what? Iman ya ma'ashul ikhwa. So for that reason we say that these ayat of a'mal al excuse me, these ayat pertain to that. It's another ayat. I'm trying to think of it right now. Let's not the ayat one. Now, just remember Ya ayuhaladina amanu, aminu billahi wa rasuli. Wal kitab alladhi anzala ala rasuli. Wal kitab alladhi anzala min qabl. Wa man yakfur billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusuli. Huh? Wal yawm al akhir. Faqad dalla dalalan baida. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, also likewise, O you who believe, believe. That which has been revealed to Muhammad. And that which has been revealed before you. And that which has been revealed before you. And whoever disbelieves in Allah and his kutubihi, wurusuli, wuriyam al akhir, and also other than those articles of faith, then they have gone far, far astray. That's not pertaining to a'mal al That's just for the a'mal of that which is of the qalb. All those ayahs that's pertaining to that, all the prophets that came with that same exact message which is of what we're speaking about now, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, and that is from the different meanings of, different meanings of Iman. It's from that which is A'mal Qulub, and it's also from that which is the A'mal of the Jawarih, of the actions of, the, of, the, of that which is of, the actions of the limb, excuse me. For those affairs are all called Iman. Are all called what? Iman. And all the messengers came with that same message. All of them came with encouraging the people with, of, with Excuse me, rather binding upon the people this matter of belief in all of these affairs that we just said. Tawheed, the Bana'ika, the Kutub, the hereafter, the Qadr. All the prophets came with that same exact message. Especially in the Usul. The Usul was one, the foundation was one. And even if it was different to some of the Shara'i, but the Usul of the religion in, the jum- in Jumla in general was all one. You understand, everyone? For example, as we know that I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, وَلَقَدْ بَعِثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ هَدَى اللَّهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَقَّتَ عَلَيْهِ الضَّلَالَ فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ إِنْ تَحْرِصُ عَلَى هُدَاهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ يُضِلْ وَمَا لَهُ مِنَ النَّاصِرِينَ Every messenger was sent to that same usul of Iman. What we're speaking about now is the usul of that which is Iman. All the prophets came with the exact same message and it was not different. That was just a little muqaddima, a little introduction to the actual book itself. So now we actually now start on the book of that which is the first hadith of that which you see with Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab first he said in the book which is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. But first we want to talk about the tariqah that was the method in which uh-huh. I have to stop? No, 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 no. I found it. I was going to ask you want to return it. Oh, you found it? Yeah. If you found it we put it in the next, next lesson inshallah. I have it ready. طيب. We want to know firstly, what's the tariqah, give a brief summary of what is the, the, uh, what is the method in which the author used in this book. Firstly, no doubt that the book is pertaining to the usul, usul al-sitta. No doubt it's pertaining to that which is the usul sit to the six articles of faith. However, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimallah rattabahu ala tariqatil al-muhaddithin, ahl al-hadith. However, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab rahimallah, he arranged this book which is the, in, in a manner or method of ahl al-hadith, of the muhaddithin. He arranged the book which is the tariqah of the muhaddithin. 
Meaning, if, you, if we open the book, the first thing that's going, the book is going to start off or inaugurate with is what? Hadith. As soon as you open the book. For example, oh, excuse me, I forgot to tell you guys that before. Also, that which is also the tariqah of this book, or the method of this book, is that Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimallah, also put in certain chapters, abwab. He put a title on each chapter. We we'll put a heading on this, on, on, excuse me, on some hadith. Correct myself. He put a chapter or a heading on some hadith. Some hadith he did not put a heading on it. You'll find that he put a heading on some, what they call abwab. He put headings on the chapters, but in some chapters you'll find he did not what? He put a heading on it. The example of that is when we just first open a book. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa bihi asta'in. It says, heading of the chapter, bang. What's the chapter pertaining to? Ba ma'rifatillah. Aizza wa jal iman bihi. The chapter of having, having knowledge of Allah, knowing Allah, and faith in Him. That's the heading. Then he put under it, Hadith Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ana aghna jiraka ani jirk. Then I ended the hadith. You understand everyone? So he put on it a heading. And Abu Wab, or putting headings on a chapter, is very beneficial. Very beneficial in the book. And it also helps the Talib al ilm in utilizing in which hadith and what the Mu'allif is trying to utilize it for. In what manner? Why is he using it? For what? What is it pertaining to? He's using it for a delay for such and such affair. He's using this for a delay for this, for this heading. So Abu Wab is something which benefits the Talib al ilm to put the headings on the chapters. You'll find that those authors that do that, or from the ulama who do that, rahimahumullah, man mata minhum wa rahimahum man baqiyah wa ma zalu ala qayl al-hayah, that those who, st- anyway, that was of those scholars who are still who died. Some of them who put the headings on the chapter, like for example, Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah. He put that abwaab, and that was his Sahih Muslim. The Imam Muslim didn't put that abwaab in the book. The abwaab was made by al Imam Nawi. I'm going to get into hadith. For those books, are very beneficial in the abwaab. Such now we're talking about the headings, the, the, or the bab, which is bab ma'rifatillah wal iman bihi. The chapter to have knowledge of Allah and what? Faith in Him. That's the heading. Then after that, he brings the hadith. To what? To show you I'm using this hadith in order to aid that heading. You understand, everyone? Is it clear? Is it not clear? <laughs> he starts off the book with that which is of, speaking about the articles of faith, that which is of the books, oh, excuse me, belief in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that which is the malaika, that which is the qadr, that which is uh, pertaining to also the books, and all those affairs. In the ending of the book, he, he ends off the book and sealing it off and ending it by speaking about that which is, for example, the fadl of, or the bounty of seeking knowledge, and also pertaining to the firqa al that which is pertaining to also, that which is the safe sect, you will find in the end of the book and also the virtue of seeking knowledge. He speaks on that in the end. And also a person having fiqh in the religion. And then he ends the book also, because I want to emphasize this, as I said in the lecture with the sisters three weeks ago, and I'm going to clarify this right now, lying upon Allah, or saying upon Allah without any knowledge. And what Ibn Qayyim mentioned, I'adam al-waqi'in, as I check, checked it again, yes, he said that it is worse than that which is of, as far as in tahrim, of that which is impermissible, and the impermissibility of it, it's worse than shirk. And the impermissibility of it. And I, re- I remember the statement, i'lam, exactly. As Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَمَا هُوَ أَشَدُّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ كُلِّي وَهُوَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَى اللَّهِ The first he started off in the ayah, says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشِ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغِيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَن تُشْرِكُ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ 
Ibn Al-Qayyim says that Allah Ta'ala arranged the ayah from that which was what? Of that which is the evil of, of that which is the evil or the deathness or that magnitude of the sin, even though it's all evil and it's all in a high degree, but relatively speaking, these sins, he started off on this level to the one that is the most highest. Al Fawahish, Mal Vahara Minha Ma Batan, that which is done evil, those abomination, abominable actions which is done with the private part, which is done openly and secretly. Then that which is al bari injustice and sin, without that which is in truth. But there's so no, but that's what they call sifatun kashif Allah mafhum Allah. We'll talk about that later. Wa al tushriku billah to set up partners with Allah. See how Allah subhanahu wa taala is going higher. And tushriku billah ma lam yunazil bi zultana. Wa an taqulu ash ala Allahi ma la taalamu. What you say upon and what and Ibn Qayyim said about that last part. ثم ثلث بما هو أشد. He was talking about shirk. I'm gonna start off when he talks about shirk. He says ثم ثلث بما هو أشد منها تحريما وهو الشرك به تبارك وتعالى. ثم ربع بما هو أشد من ذلك كله هو القول عليه بلا علم. He said about that which is of shirk. He said that which is of those two sins that preceded shirk. He says Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned which is worse than that which is fawahish and al-idhm al-baghi. He said, which is setting up partners with him in his worship. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended it off with that which is more severe than all of that. And that's what Ibn Qayyim mentioned verbatim. Which is to say upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which you have no knowledge of. This is a hard to swallow. Most people say, oh, I've never heard of this. None of us have knowledge. None of us know everything. If you really study the book of Allah, you will find a lot of treasures. If you follow the, the book of Allah and look at the tafasir of it, you will find a lot of treasures that you would think, like, wow, I didn't know that. Even me, I still discover things in the book of Allah, the tafsir of it, I'd be like, whoa! For example, the ayah, which is in the book, we said in the khutbah yesterday, I'm sure a lot of people didn't say about the ayah what happened with shaitan, where Ibn Abbas says, well, let you do akhtarahum shakirin, that the shaitan said, you will not find a majority of them thankful. You know what Ibn Abbas said about the tafsir? You will not find a majority of them upon tawheed. لا تجد أكثرهم واحدين. You open the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala and contemplate on it, read it with the tafsir of the Sahaba, with the word Allah alayhim of that was the tariq of the muhaddithin of that was the different riwayat. Not talking about those people who are mufakir, so called as they say mufakir Islami, those who are so called Islamic thinkers. Even the aspect of saying Islamic thinker is incorrect. That even even Sheikh Bayt said that's incorrect to call yourself an Islamic thinker is incorrect. Because it necessitates as if you're saying that it's, it can be accepted or rejected. It's an opinion. It's like a, it's like a theory. It's not even permissible to say Mufakir Islami. But, as he said, at any rate, but it says, in the, if you look at the tafsir of those from the Sahaba, it says what? You will not find a majority of them thankful. You will not find a majority of them what? Wahideen. If you really study the book of Allah, you'll find treasures after treasures after treasures. You'll be like, subhanAllah, I never knew that. Nobody knows everything except that which was the ilm al kamil was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that everyone? So, that which we say of that which is pertaining to this affair of what? He sealed off the book, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, with this matter which is what? To not to say upon Allah that which you have no knowledge of. He ended the whole book off by that. By that matter. Allahu Akbar. Understand everyone? <laughs> then after that, yeah, Ma'ashal Ikhwa, you will find if you look inside or also in this book. Who is getting late? Maybe I'll just stop. He also, if you look at the book, you will find and conclude that the Mu'allif, that he also, Rahimallah, talked about Iman, and he also talked about the branches of faith, and he also talked about the characteristics of faith in his book. You'll find that Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab also spoke about this matter likewise. And I also, likewise, I want to mention that. talk about that right now there's too much too much information just to summarize and everything this is just to start off and inaugurate the booklet by giving everybody a little glimpse of what was going to be the method in which Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab was going to start off this tremendous book of his Rahimallah in which what in which one will be surprised by some of the fawag will bring us out of this book and how tremendous it is and how it's important for a Muslim to not only understand this book to memorize it if he's able to memorize some of the hadith in it 
and to also have the firm creed and belief in it without any doubt. Is this a matter, as we talked about, I said to the brothers in Washington, D.C.? This is a fair of Akita. And it's a shame in the, in, the, in the days and times that we live in. The matters pertaining to what's beneficial in the grave and the hereafter, we're very lax in it. But it's every affair that's pertaining to rectify our worldly mundane affairs, we're very, very diligent in it. Very diligent. If we make sure it's on time, we bring the book to our boss, make sure everything is good, prepared. If we take time out to make sure it's done early, make sure that we get there on time, make sure even some of the non Muslim colleges that we, some of the brothers are there, make sure that everything is done properly. Bach got my book. Well, he told me it, I have it. But pertaining to the knowledge of that which is going to benefit you in the grave, uh, when I get around to it, I'll do it. Uh, he won't really ask me. It's not that really important like that. Eh, I get time, I'll do it. That's the attitude we have. It's not a good attitude. This is what's going to benefit you in your grave. Rather, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the book Usul al Thalatha was entitled about the questions in the grave. Answering the questions in the grave was Usul al Thalatha. And everybody's lax. Eh, I get around to doing it. Inshallah. Eh. Inshallah, when? You understand, everyone? We have to change our attitude and how we respect the book of Allah, respect the Sunnah of Muhammad. Respect the methodology of the Sahaba, the sacrifice they made for all of us to come in these days of time to be lazy. It's a sad situation. For that reason, I'm actually, I highly encourage the brothers, if they can, to be diligent, inshallah, I hope the brother get the book, uh, the copy of the papers, so we can start on this book and we can show how important this aqidah is and how it's important for the Muslim to be diligent in learning it and for it to be tied to his heart like a knot. Because this is your light in the dark times we live in. For, this is not only your light for the darkness of yourself, it's the darkness that your children are going to also in, embark upon after we die. Because if without any light they have to carry in this darkness they live in in these days and times, they're lost. They're finished. They're subjected to any type of deviance out there. You might find your, your son going to Syria thinking he's fighting in, in the Khawat, fighting in a, in a jihad. And it's not a jihad. Because of ignorance. It's not jihad. You got your son now fighting, for example, he's going around saying, I don't have to pray, it's Islam is in my heart. That's either jet. That's what we just talked about. They're subjected to every type of deviance out there, yeah, If we don't, the most, and I told the brothers this, even in Philadelphia, the most important thing you could give your children is not pacifying them, even though I'm not saying it's not permissible to do it. Grant your children something of that which is a reward. It's not that fact that you give them polo boots, sneakers, and all the other good things, or that which is a, P, or what do they call it, uh, Xbox 3. The most vital, most important thing you can teach your child is aqaid and minhaj. That is the greatest gift you can ever give your son or your daughter. If you granted them that or put in a position where they have that, you have done the greatest favor you could ever and the greatest bill or the greatest duty of a parent you could have ever done for your child. If you come up short in that, you have neglected, which is the worst thing you can neglect out of anything you could have neglected in your life. And that is the reason why we have to start changing our attitudes as it pertains to this matter. Stop being so laxed. And if we keep going the way we're going, you're going to see your child in the years, the years, the years to come. Whoa. Whoa what happened? What, what's, what, what's going on? And he learned Aqidah to Tawheed, Salaf, Aqidah to Salaf. What was the companions upon it? Didn't, didn't teach him, did it? What, what happened? And at the end of the day, if you taught him that, or you put a position, and if Allah misled him, that was out of some hikmah. It was something that Allah knows that you don't know. But you did your duty at the end of the day. And you can say, my dhimma, I free myself in front of Allah on the day of resurrection. I tried to put my son in a manner where he could learn the correct belief of his religion. I have to stop here, inshallah, and next Saturday... We'll talk about this. 
we're starting the book, actually getting the hadith of it. I wanted to get into it today, but time's getting late. And, and you know, our virtuous brother, Kashi Khan, Hafizullah wa is to start his book. Inshallah, we'll stop here. So everyone have a good glimpse of the book so far. Start off, inaugurate. We'll stop here. And any questions? Well, there shouldn't be. But any rate, but if there is, tafaddal. <laughs> هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت واستغفرك واتوب اليك